Welcome back to the Two-Way Report. In this video, we'll talk about the Matt Hoover auto key card case legal fiasco. Yes, we know everyone and their grandmother has tackled this topic, but I guess better late than never. So, as announced by the Florida United States Attorney Roger B. Hanberg, Justin Boyer Irvin, aged 43 and hailing from Orange Park, Florida, along with Matthew Raymond Hoover, aged 39 and representing Wisconsin, have been charged guilty by a federal jury for supposedly cooking up a scheme to sell some unregistered gizmos that they called auto key cards, or as the gifted kids at the ATF like to call them, machine guns. No, I'm not kidding. Irvin was convicted of seven counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices, three counts of possessing unregistered machine gun conversion devices, and one count of structuring cash transactions to avoid currency transaction reporting requirements, which is absurd, but I'll get to it later. On the other hand, Hoover was convicted of four counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices. The potential punishment for Irvin is up to 110 years in federal prison, and for Hoover, it's a maximum of 45 years in federal prison. The sentencing hearing is set for July 31st, 2023. Irvin's charges date back to March 22nd, 2021, and Hoover's to January 26th, 2022. Both are now in the custody of the U.S. Marshal Service. Now, let us clear up any misconceptions here. These guys aren't exactly international arms dealers that you typically see in the movies. No, no, they're just selling some metal pieces that the ATF and the judge both argue will turn a semi-automatic rifle into a fully automatic machine gun. And when I say metal pieces, I mean a credit card shaped thin slice of metal with an etching of what's known as a lightning link. A lightning link, not the one etched on the metal slices, but an actual lightning link is a device used to convert a semi-automatic firearm into a fully automatic one. It's essentially a small piece of metal with a hook that catches the bolt carrier as it moves back and forth. When the trigger is pulled, the lightning link causes the bolt carrier to fire repeatedly, creating a rapid fire effect. Now, before you start thinking that Matt and Justin made some sort of tech that only Key from James Bond would have, no, they didn't. Lightning links only work on a select few AR-15s, not even the majority of them. And even then, you're not guaranteed to get it to work properly. So basically, you're paying for a piece of metal that may or may not turn your gun into a fully automatic weapon. So, one of these guys, Matt Hoover, was selling the metal trinkets and was promoting them on his YouTube page because he partly makes money off of the promotions and because he likes to give the ATF the middle finger. And I can understand him. The higher-ups at the ATF are some of the brightest brainiacs you'll ever meet. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. And that's how the Department of Justice got involved, claiming Matt was engaged in the commercial activity by trying to sell these machine guns. And because his partner was making them, he got tangled up in this mess too, just like any other sponsor getting a cut of the profits. It's absurd that in today's world, a mere mention or creation of a certain item can land you in hot water with the government. I mean, who knew that a credit card-shaped piece of metal with a simple etching could be the cause of such chaos? But alas, that's how woke America is. Criminals in the streets don't get punished, while well, guys like Matt do. But back to the matter at hand. The ATF examined the auto key cards and claimed to have found something that could be construed as a machine gun conversion device. The firearms enforcement officer was reportedly able to remove the pieces of a lightning link from the auto key card using a common Dremel rotary tool in about 40 minutes. And when these pieces were inserted into an AR-15 type firearm, it converted the semi-automatic firearm to a fully automatic one. So yeah, the government is making it look like this little piece of metal has the potential to be very dangerous. Let's be real here. It takes a lot more than a lightning link to turn an AR-15 into a fully automatic weapon. It's like saying a bicycle can become a motorcycle if you attach a motor to it. It's just not that simple. But despite all of this, these two men found themselves in hot water with the law thanks to the geniuses at the ATF. Well, it seems like these two gents got themselves into quite a pickle. Not only were they accused of conspiring to sell some questionable goods, but Irvin got himself in even deeper hot water by being accused of possessing and transferring the goods. And if that wasn't enough, the court convicted him of structuring cash payments to avoid those pesky currency transaction reporting requirements. Ugh, what an abuse of power. Have you ever tried depositing a large sum of cash? It's like trying to navigate through a minefield. To add insult to injury, the whole fiasco was kicked off by none other than a bank teller. Yes, you heard that right. Our boy, Justin Irvin, had to take out a hefty sum of cash, and the bank had the audacity to tell him he could only have a certain amount per day. What kind of nonsense is that? So, he had to go on a little field trip to different banks to make up the sum. Of course, the government came up with an elaborate story claiming that he was purposely staying under the threshold of reporting. It's a real shame, isn't it? 
Banks used to be the go-to pal for all our financial needs. The bond between a bank and its customer was once as sacred as that between a shrink and his patient or an attorney with his client. But now, banks lick the federal government's boots. In fact, the only reason the ATF even caught wind of this case was because our Justin's bank ratted him out, saying, hey, this dude is depositing an absurd amount of cash, and it smells fishy. What's really striking here is the conspiracy charges. It's like the government is trying to find a loophole to bypass due process. You see, once someone is charged with a crime, the government has to prove each and every element of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt. But with conspiracy charges, they can just say, hey, you had a plan to commit this crime, without having to prove anything. Sure, they have to show that several people agreed to engage in the activity, but it still seems like a bit of a dodgy workaround, doesn't it? It's like being told to adhere to the rules without even knowing what they are. And this, my friends, is why conspiracy charges tend to pop up so often. Matt Hoover got himself tangled up in this mess all because Justin Irvin, the brains behind the auto key card, asked him to sponsor some ads on the CRS firearms channel. The government managed to pin the conspiracy charge on him somehow. As a result, both Matt Hoover and Justin Irvin are currently sitting behind bars, facing the prospect of spending the next several decades locked up. It's a sobering reminder that the government can pretty much do whatever they want until they're told otherwise, which often takes years and years of fighting. Just look at the ongoing Second Amendment battles in states like Massachusetts, New York, Hawaii, Maryland, and our favorite, California. It often takes a huge lawsuit just to get them to change their ways, and even then, they still try to push the envelope. Now, while Matt and Justin are set to be sentenced in July, it's worth noting that the federal sentencing guidelines can be a bit of a crapshoot. They take into account the underlying offense as well as the offender's criminal history to come up with a presumptively acceptable sentence in the eyes of the government. Of course, judges can still deviate above or below that if they have good cause to do so. It's a bit like playing a twisted game of roulette, but unfortunately, the stakes are much, much higher. Looking ahead, we still have the appeals process to consider in Matt Hoover's case. Challenging the constitutionality of laws can be a risky business as it often puts someone's livelihood and well-being on the line. It's a tough pill to swallow, but it's a necessary step in the fight for justice. So, what can we do in the meantime? Well, for starters, we can support Matt's legal team as well as Justin's legal team. But there's something else we can do, something that may seem small but can actually make a big impact. We can contact our lawmakers. It's no secret that the federal government has been known to wield its power in all sorts of ways across the country. One prime example is the ATF and the Department of Justice, which seem to be of the opinion that we, as citizens, don't quite know how to govern ourselves. Maybe we're committing a crime, maybe we're not following the rules as they see fit, who knows? But by contacting our lawmakers and letting them know that we're concerned about cases like Matt Hoover's and Justin Irvin's where there may be an overreach or weaponization of federal power, we can make our voices heard. In fact, there's a standing committee in the United States Congress that is currently investigating these types of issues. So, don't underestimate the power of a well-placed call or email. It could be the difference between justice and injustice. And that's all the time we have for today. If you like these kinds of videos, please share them with your family and friends, and tap that notification bell too while you're at it. Thanks, and have a good one.